And women have historically faced numerous prejudiced beliefs and stereotypes, impeding their access to fair and equal treatment within the society and the justice system. And now, the Supreme Court of India has prepared a handbook on combating gender stereotypes. As soon as a five-judge bench assembled to hear pleas challenging the abrogation of Article 370, the Chief Justice of India announced unveiling of this very handbook. Let's tell you more about the handbook. Now, the handbook is a bit to remove gender stereotypes from law. Meanwhile, it contains a glossary of gender unjust terms. And the handbook also suggests alternative words and phrases. As for the Chief Justice of India, the handbook will also give a fresh impetus to quest towards a gender-just legal order. It will be a crucial document to ensure that the courts can deliver equal and impartial justice to individuals of all genders in the country. Now, let's tell you more about this. Now, words like Eve teasing, prostitute and housewife may soon be out of the legal lexicon. Let's take a look at some of the uh, alternatives that the Supreme Court has suggested. Now, Eve teasing has been listed as a stereotype promoting language. The preferred alternative is street sexual harassment and not Eve teasing. Meanwhile, prostitute has been listed as stereotype promoting language as well. The preferred alternative is sex worker and not prostitute. Similarly, the preferred alternative to housewife is homemaker, not housewife. The handbook deals with the so-called inherent traits of women. One of the identified stereotypes is the idea that women are overly emotional, illogical, and cannot take any decisions. The reality is that a person's gender does not determine or influence their capacity for rational thought. The handbook points just that very point out. It also refers to assumptions made about a woman's character based on her expressive choices, such as the clothes that she's wearing or maybe her sexual history. The handbook aims to serve as a guide for judges, raising awareness on the need to avoid stereotypes against women in all facets of the decision-making and writing. The handbook states that by consciously avoiding the use of stereotypes, the judiciary can foster an environment where gender equality is upheld and also respected at the same time. We are now being joined by Dr. Ranjana Kumari, who is a director at Corporate Social Responsibility India and is also the chairperson at Women Power Connect. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, Dr. Kumari. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Right. Now, Dr. Kumari, it is a major step towards gender equality, and we've seen on multiple occasions how we casually use words like housewife and Eve teasing. Uh, you've also been distributing the handbooks before joining us here on Beyond. Talk to us as to how do you assess the release of the handbook as a crucial tool in promoting impartiality and equality in India? See, all the language reflects the social mindset, you know, how people perceive women and how they look at uh, women, their character, their being, you know. So this really is not just restrictive of legal system where we use this language. And also, it also explains the biases against the uh, against women. And that is why you start the justice delivery from that point of view that, you know, woman is a slut or a woman is a whore or woman is, you know, since every, or if you look, at the language we use about women in society it really is coming from a very very uh, sexist perspective from a gender inequal perspective so i think this booklet is a really really a big welcome because not only that it will help in um, creating more sensitivity and fairness in terms of our judiciary and the way they, uh, they are looking at um, uh, dispensing justice, especially in the case of sexual violence, but also it will uh, have a larger implication in society. Because, you know, if, if the judiciary is setting this tone that you can't look at women uh, from the point of view of already, you know, discriminating against her from having your own personal and social bias against her, you have to be fair and you have to really look 
at women from the perspective of a person, an individual, from a perspective of a citizen of India, from within the and also within the constitutional framework, uh, fairness in terms of equality. So if that's the message from this booklet to the judiciary, this will percolate down to the society. And eventually the thing that we are fighting for, we are we are fighting for because you know victim blaming is a kind of habit that a lot of our justice delivery system has developed. The moment a person will walk in, starts from the police station and goes up to the courtrooms, that you know you you consider a woman to be uh, wrong, and there is a already preconceived notion about right. who she is, what she must have done, and so I think all that is going to change. Then there there are not chances only of getting better justice delivery, but also chances that society mindset also changes with this kind of approach. So we are really very happy and we welcome right. it. We are going to organize a round table. We are going to circulate it across the country. We want everybody to have a look at this uh, booklet. Uh, Dr. Kumar, you do mention as to how uh, this very handbook which has been released will help in changing the society's mindset. But shed some more light on how will bringing in these terminologies in the legal community actually improve the overall environment of women in India? Well, you know, legal community is not uh, divorced from the society, the same people who are. So legal community also comes from this society, which has all kinds of inherent stereotypical biases against women. So uh, similarly, you know, the, the, when there are judgments, there are these judgments, then that those judgments also affect the way society thinks about women. If you start thinking, oh, she is wrong, she is, you know, a very small example is Eve teasing. We have been fighting against right. this for a long time. And that is why when the law was written and when we all helped in drafting it, we said sexual harassment, there is nothing like Eve teasing. Eve teasing almost looks like some kind of a soft behavior or some kind of a you know very friendly behavior. It's not. It's really you are harassing a woman on a street. So I think street harassment is the right way of describing it. Right. And then not only that you think about it, but also then you imagine that situation sitting in a courtroom that somebody is really been harassed, somebody is really been, you know, bothered by the behavior or somebody has really been, you know, um, um, tortured uh, or you can say even feeling so dejected because that's what is happening to her or you are really pushing her back into her shell. Uh, society wants a woman not to move around much, not to, you know, people right. start. Uh, stopping girls from going anywhere. So this is what e teasing always right. was about, and then now it is street harassment. So I think this is how you will change the idea yes. of every which way you describe a woman. A child born out of uh, wedlock is a very normal thing. Child is a child, but calling a child right, a Dr. bastard. Kumar. I mean, like look at the way, uh, look at the way society uh, is uh, behaving towards women, and this language is the first expression of right. inequality in our society. Right, right. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamari, on joining us and Beyond Shanghai Insights with us on this very significant decision. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me.